I have a naughty streak. Hmm. The cloak of darkness covers me. I hate to admit how much I enjoy it. I think the mage's guild, perhaps on a higher tier, they do take themselves uh, quite seriously, you know. Jeral view in. Well, I already have a room for the night. Nova Roma. Hmm. Well, could I have a look? Maybe they have some some good goods. I like goods that are good. Damn it. Ah, losing my skill here. Yes. Excellent. Just a brief stop off before we go to the Mage's Guild, hmm? Ah, ceramic, pewter. The pewter does not shine like silver. I don't much care for it. Indeed not. Brief history of the Empire. Guide to Chaden Hall. Oh, if we were in Chaden Hall, I would have a look at that. Potatoes, Beggar Prince. Uh, there is no time to read these books here. Guide to Leowin, Guide to Braville. Frontier Conquest. Hmm, historians, no. Beggar Prince. I shall take this. We will read it at some point, my friends. Hmm. And what is down this way? I do hope uh, the owner is asleep. Although the beds remain empty. Which troubles me quite a bit. Where might they be lurking? Cupboard, brown shirt. What do you hide in your cupboard? Hmm. I was hoping for a... Uh, some valuables, but they seem to have that a bit more well hidden than I would have expected. Oh, this is a nice oven you have here, hmm? Not just a fireplace, but you can cook on the stone on top. Ah, reminds me of my mother's house, cooking a delicious bread. Oh my, I hear footsteps. Although I think it might be my footsteps. Does not seem to be much for me here. But I should like to read the book. Aha! Did not get caught by the guards coming out either. Nor the winds. Yes. How about that, hmm? Surely they will have some goodies for Brandar. I was just speaking about how much I needed to upgrade my armor and weapons. And hopefully, they have a good bit of both inside. Ah! I will need to buy more of these lockpicks in bulk. I seem to break them consistently. Hmm. They don't leave many things sitting out, do they? Fur curious. Leather boots. Yes, not much. I was hoping for uh, a bit more pickings here. Tan linens, mm, collared shirt, stitched leather shoes, arctic fur leggings. I think this is what the uh, the fellows in the Ice Dragon Clan were wearing. Interesting, interesting indeed. Nothing in these sacks for Brandar. How about this shelf? Ah, leather. I think this is equivalent to what I'm currently wearing. Fur helmet? Iron helmet. Hmm. I take these, this, that. It's got to be at least in a bit better repair than what I have currently. Oh! 
Uh, goodbye. I have to leave now. Oh, the guards Stop! are going to catch me. You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Well, I don't think that's going to happen, friend. I'm so sorry. Then pay with your blood! It was a bounty of about five gold, but... It's the principle, it is. I don't want them to take my things, all these pretty things that I worked so hard for. Not so hard, but... <laughs> it's mine. It's mine now. Finders keepers. Don't you understand? Okay, nobody sees me anymore. Ah, more motherwort. Have quite a bit of this. Ah. I'm not enjoying the cold as much as I uh, thought I would. I suppose enjoying it is the wrong thing to say. The cold bothers me a bit more than I thought it would, yes. But I do want to sit down on this rock and we'll have a little read of my findings. The Beggar Prince, yes. We look down upon the beggars of the Empire. These lost souls are the poor and wretched of the land. Every city has its beggars. Most are so poor they only have the clothes on their backs. They eat the scraps the rest of us throw out. We toss them a coin so we don't have to think too long about their plight. Imagine my surprise when I heard the tale of the Beggar Prince. I could not imagine what a prince of beggars would be. Here's the tale I heard. It takes place in the first age, when gods walked like men and Daedra stalking the wilderness with impunity. It's a time before they were all confined to oblivion. There was once a man named Weedle, or maybe it was a woman. The story goes to great length to avoid decla declaring Weedle's gender. Weedle was the thirteenth child of a king of Valenwood. As such, Weedle was in no position to take the throne or even inherit much property or wealth. Weedle had left the palace to find independent fortune and glory. After many days of endless forest roads and tiny villages, Weedle came upon three men surrounding a beggar. The beggar was swaddled in rags from head to toe. No portion of the vagabond's body was visible. The men were intent on slaying the beggar. With a cry of rage and indignation, Weedle charged the men with the sword drawn. Being simple town folk, armed with only with pitchforks and scythes, they immediately fled from the armored figure with the shining sword. Many thanks for saving me, wheezed the beggar from beneath a heap of foul rags. Weedle could barely stand the stench. What is your name, wretch? Weedle asked. I'm Namira. Unlike the townsfolk, Weedle was well learned. That name meant nothing to them, but to Weedle, it was an opportunity. You're the Daedric Lord, Weedle exclaimed. Why did those men harass you? You could have slain them with a whisper. I'm pleased you recognize me, Namira rasped. I'm frequently reviled by townsfolk. It pleases me to be recognized for my attribute. For it is, if not for my name... Weedle knew that Namir was the Daedric Lord of all things gross and repulsive. Diseases such as leprosy and gangrene were her domain. Where others might have seen danger, Weedle saw opportunity. Oh, great Namira, let me apprentice myself to you. I ask only that you grant me powers to make my fortune and forge a name for myself that will live throughout the ages. Nay, I make my way alone in the world. I have no need for an apprentice. Namir shambled off down the road. Weedle would not be put off. With a bound, Weedle was at Namira's heel, pressing the case for an apprenticeship. For thirty-three days and nights, Weedle kept up the debate. Namira said nothing, but Weedle's voice was ceaseless. Finally, on the thirty-three day, Weedle was too hoarse to talk. Namira looked back on the suddenly silent figure. Weedle knelt in the mud at her feet, open hands raised in supplication. It seems you have completed your apprenticeship to me after all, Namira declared. I shall grant your request. Weedle was overjoyed. I grant you the power of disease. You may choose to be afflicted with any disease you choose, changing them at will so long as it has visible symptoms. However, you must always bear at least one. I grant you the power of pity. You may evoke pity in anyone that sees you. Finally, I grant you the power of disregard. You may cause others to disregard your presence. Weedle was aghast. These were not boons from which fortune could be made. They were curses, each awful in their own right. But together they were unthinkable. How am I to make my fortune and forge a name for myself with these terrible gifts? 
as you begged at my feet for thirty-three days and nights, so shall you now beg for your fortune in the cities of men. Your name will become legendary among the beggars of Tamriel. The story of Weedle, the prince of beggars, shall be handed down through the generations. It was as Nemeir predicted. Weedle was an irresistible beggar. None could see the wretch without desperately wanting to toss a coin at the huddled form. However, Weedle also discovered that the power of disregard gave him access to the secrets of the realms. People unknowingly said important things where Weedle could hear them. Weedle grew to know the comings and goings of nearly every citizen in the city. To this day, it's said that if you really want to know something, go ask the beggars. They have the eyes and ears throughout the cities. They know all the little secrets of the daily lives of its citizens. So it was. Interesting story. Now I think I might go back and pay my fine. I just wanted to read my book. I, uh, accept the fact that I won't be able to wear any armor or things like this. Hey, hey. What's the matter, getting tired? Um, not tired, just, just want to, uh, just want to it's yield. It's all over, lawbreaker. Your spree okay. is at an end. I'll take any stolen goods you have. The next move is yours. Pay your fine or I haul you away. That is just fine. We shall pay you some gold. It is only five That's gold. That's too bad. I was hoping you'd resist arrest. Okay, I did. here's the procedure. <sighs> we go to the castle. First we search you, confiscate any stolen goods. Then you pay your fine and we release you. Oh, don't search everywhere. Unless you're the one doing the searching. I might rather enjoy that. <laughs> ah. Well... I seem to have made it, friends. Unfortunately, uh, I did not come away with as much as I had hoped, but the procedure was relatively quick. We're still enjoying the night somewhat. Hopefully I can uh, find my way into a weapon shop. Or perhaps to the Mage's Guild, where I had first set out. But I was just having so much fun, being sneaky. So sneaky. And they did, they did harm me just a little bit, but I suppose that's to be expected. Hmm. Is this the Mage Guild? No, this is Nor the Winds. How about I give it a little leap? Ah! Haha! -ha. I can't seem to climb any higher. Ah! Quite an interesting roof they have here. There we are. Just had to find a place that I could uh, sink my claws into. Is this the, the Mage's Guild I stand on top of? Fighter's Hall. Mage's Guild must be... yes. Just down the way. Ramanus Paulus, I think, is the man that I uh, was told to talk to about this... this horrible curse that hangs over me. Hmm... So many goodies in here. I need this. For my adventurings. Yes. This will come in quite handy. Fundaments of alchemy, I already know. Hmm. Alembic and whatnot would come in quite handy as well. Soul gems. Yes. I am a member of the guild, so I do feel that I have a right to these things, you know. And thank goodness that it is night time. So I can have full run of the place, hmm? Guild storage. Associates clarity, associates renewal. Interesting. I care not for these things. Because they want me to have them. You see how that works? I only want things that I'm not supposed to have. I have a naughty streak. I have to admit to myself. Oh. Books. Let's have a look at the books. A book look. Ah, varieties of Daedra, Tamrielic lore. I think we have uh, studied most of these things. 
We need to be on the lookout for rarer books. Something that might tickle my fancy. How about down here? Perhaps somebody has a, a book that I could borrow, hmm? Well, let's see. Ramanus Paulus is who I'm looking for. The Wolf Queen. Fine wood desk is locked. Maybe I could just... Hmm? And then a little more. And last one. Just listen for that click. There it is. Yes. The Wolf Queen Volume 8. My goodness, this is quite a series of books. I should like to collect them and sit down with them at some point. An expanded excerpt from Vampires of Tamriel. Oh my. Let's have a look at the handbill. Tired of the noisome dim at the common tap room? Stay at the general view. Peaceful, tasteful, and only for the most discerning of customers. Everyone knows quality comes at a price. Ah, I want to know about the vampires. My goodness. If I could find the first. I found the book, an expanded excerpt of Vampires of Tamriel. In it, there's a mention about the Light of Dawn, a weapon of legend, and the bane of vampires. It possibly rests here on Cyrodiil, in a dungeon called Nornal Hoist. If the information in the book is correct, a mighty vampire lord is currently draining the power from Light of Dawn through dark incantations. Perhaps I should investigate this further, although it sounds like a very dangerous deal in which to meddle. Uh, unfortunately, I can't even touch it at the moment. I'm sure it would smite me just like it would any other vampire. Uh, but at least I resisted the urge to feed on this sleeping woman. Although, should it make my magic stronger? Hmm... There's a tempting thought. <sighs> I wonder who the most powerful of these mages is, hmm? Aiden Strongheart and the Nord. I will take. We shall read. I like so much. Bone meal. Bone. Stain cap. Hmm. Fine cloth. Volanaro. <sighs> I must stay away. Mm. My mouth does water. I must admit to myself. Pearl, ogre's teeth, anti-venoms. Hmm. Mm. I can't stop looking at him. I can see the blood flowing through him. Such a tempting prospect. Mm. I must find the cure sooner rather than later, friends. I do uh, feel it taking its effect on me. This vampirism. Oh. Different, different types of mushrooms growing here. Quite interesting. Venison, leek... Yes, I take these things. Minerals of Morrowind. Well, I think this will fit in with our geomancy, hmm? The mineral resources that lie within the province of Morrowind are vast, likely due to the geologic activity lent to the area by the volcanic Red Mountain. Indeed, the lands of the Dark Elves can be counted among the most productive in all the Empire in terms of mineral deposits. There do not appear to be especially dense concentrations of particular minerals in any given locale. Rather, different minerals of impressive value are spread around the province. Some of the more rare and valuable minerals contained within Morrowind are raw ebony, raw glass, adamantium, and gold. Morrowind is not limited to these alone, as there are also modest amounts of precious and semi-precious gemstones such as emeralds, rubies, diamonds, opals, and amethyst. Recent assessment parties assigned to the frozen island of Solstheim have also indicated that further opportunities may exist there. I do remember that as well. Too bad I did not know geomancy at that time. Anyways, 
Adamantium is one of the most precious and rarest minerals within the province. The primary use of adamantium is in the production of weapons and armor, although it can be wrought into fine art for the extremely wealthy. The metal is very durable, but is also quite weighty. In the hands of all but the strongest soldiers, adamantium weapons can become unwieldy, and the exhaustion that comes of swinging such weapons or wearing such armor makes it impractical for prolonged use. The price of the raw material also prevents its use in a scale that would be needed for war. The simple lack of adamantium, coupled with its weight and rarity, do not make for a good investment for the fighting warrior. While adamantium can be found all around the province in small quantities, it's not, it is not known to be found on Vardenfell. Due to its scarcity, it is not economically advantageous to establish any adamantium mines in Morrowind. Adventures have been known to brave the depths of Old Mornhold in search of adamantium deposits known to lie beneath the sacred city. Mornhold, yes, I know this name. Ebony is valuable and useful and relatively abundant in the province. As with adamantium, ebony has the drawback of being ridiculously heavy, although in the right hands it serves exceptionally well as protective armor as well as lethal weapons of high quality and durability. Like my dagger. Many ebony weapons are in existence, most notably in the service of ordinators, but the armor is a good deal rarer and harder to come by. Some fortunate and rich nobles or adventurers own pieces of ebony armor, but the person with a full suit is a rare individual. Raw ebony itself is heavy, and even a small load will encumber the mightiest, making transportation of large amounts of the mineral completely impractical except by ship. Currently, the ebony industry in Morrowind is modest, and we should look to expand it due to the obvious potential for profit. Although ebony is known to exist throughout the province, it is often found very deep underground, making the initial stages of mining uncommonly expensive. Currently, there are a few large operations extracting ebony, such as the mine near Caldera, several on the mainland, and a number of smaller mines within the Red Mountain region and the Ashlands. Currently, a good deal of prospecting is in progress in an attempt to expand the ebony trade in Morrowind. The most recent example of our efforts being the proposed mine on the Isle of Solstein, provided or test pro pr produce sufficient yield, <laughs> and the frozen grounds do not impede progress drastically. Gold is both malleable and ductile, as well as highly valuable. Most of the Empire's gold comes from the West, and little is found at Morrowind, with none at all on Vardenfell. This makes gold a very highly prized item, and although it is encumbering, it makes for an excellent form of currency. Should there be a shortage of money, gold can always be traded. Other than funding, the practical uses of gold are few, due to its weight and malleability. It can be forged to forward to form armor, but this armor is both expensive and not terribly strong. Due to lack of gold in Morrowind, it wouldn't be effective to begin mining operations, not when it can be mined on the western side of Tamriel for much less. Glass is one of the most unique materials in the province. It is light and yet is still re reasonably durable, making remarkably sturdy light armors and weapons. Glass is also relatively rare and quite costly, so few complete suits of armor are known of. Popular among the armagers, who could also expect that several of the great houses might possess numerous pieces, glass weapons are also of high quality with rager edges and slight heft. Another valuable property of glass is the enchanting potential it contains. That's what I'm interested in, yes. Glass weapons are prized among enchanters who can make excellent fire, frost, and poison blades with them, to name just, just a few. The weakness of glass weapons lies in their durability, being nowhere near as reliable as adamantium, ebony, or a small host of lesser materials. To add to the already costly price of glass, very few smiths are trained and skilled in the creation of glass items. House Telvani has interest in the expanding of expansion of glass mining, probably to add to their profits from enchanting and selling, along with raw glass's unique alchemical properties. At the moment, plans for expansion of the glass industry by the East Empire Company have not yet been discussed, and although House Telvanni is planning on taking the matter into their own hands, restrictions and pressure from the Empire are expected. Iron is another mineral pro Iron is another mineral that is located in the province of Morrowind that is not to be ignored. While it doesn't exist copiously and isn't nearly as valuable as the others, it can be said that iron is a far more effective metal than some of the others. As a raw mineral, the value is small, but once extracted, it can be forged into many tools and weapons. As a bonus, when iron is mixed with carbon, a much stronger alloy appears. Steel. Steel is one of the most widely used metals in all of the Empire due to its strength and its malleability. At the moment, there's little need to expand the potential of the East Empire Company's ability to acquire iron in the province of Morrowind. The yield simply wouldn't be high enough, and it isn't valuable enough to warrant the inherent expenses for working in such a volatile land. Hmm. Well, it did not tell me too much about uh, my 
current geomancy situation. It does make me wish somewhat that I could go back to Morrowind. Just for a moment and collect some, uh, some goods, yes. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.